Welcome back, everybody. We're here at Seoul, South Korea for the next big match of Dom One Gaming up against Homolife Esports. This has huge playoff implications. Whoever wins this one could potentially boost themselves into the playoffs. And honestly, Valdez, when it comes to remaining schedule, you look for the 4v5s and the 1v2s, and we've actually played most of those for the regular season. SKT Sandbox, that's going to be a banger. This is right up there with that because these are two teams who are in and about it when it comes to four, five, and six. One team is going to be left at home sad, while the other two teams will be playing off in the wild card match. This could be a preview of the wild card match, that best of three that opens up the playoffs. Very interesting to evaluate these two is honestly, it was Dumb One's arrival when they 2 0 would Hanwha Life in the first round, Robin, with Punch popping off on the Lee Sin. That was where we were like, all right, Dumb One yeah. isn't a pretender. They could be a contender. Now Hanwha Life feeling really desperate to pick up the match victory, to change that head-to-head, -head, and just to make sure that they have something going, because Dumb One recently have been falling away a bit. Yeah, Hanwha Life here. I wrote down some stats. They only seem to lose to the top five teams yeah. that are not them. So they've lost to Griffin, Sandbox, SKT, Dom1, and Kingzone, all 0-2. And now they're going to be looking to spin one of those matchups around here up against King, or rather, Dom1 tonight, trying to flip that 0-2 on its head to a 2-0. And as you guys can see, and as you mentioned before, Papa, Dom1 did take that extra loss recently to Kingzone, so a little bit of an extra game given over to King Zone and Hanwha Life here. That means that Dom One is a game behind. So if you lose here, then this, the head-to-head -head is one-to-one, -one, then Hanwha Life are really in kind of complete ownership. You lose control of your future if Dom One Gaming loses. At this point, if Dom One Gaming win, then it's all about the remaining results. So you want to maintain your own destiny so while it's very important for both teams, I think Dumb One Gaming are going to be more desperate. And desperation usually brings out the best or the worst of a human being. That's just the reality of a desperate situation. Was Dumb One Gaming winning last time out, but a lot has changed in five or six best of threes. Certainly has. You can see that Dumb One went on that six-game winning streak, but then they 
butted heads with Sandbox and King Zone. Obviously, a couple of very strong opponents. Hama Life on a two game winning streak, but it's Genji and Jinair. So, much harder opponents for them coming up now. And Hama Life, if they lose today, then Damwon will say, huh, enemy team has SKT Griffin Sandbox remaining. That is <laughs> really hard. Those are the three best teams in Korea by far for Hanwha Life. So, Maybe the desperation for Hanwha Life is more real than the actual current predicament illustrates because the future, this is very much looking at the weather report and be like, oh, it's raining for a while. Certainly we could see Hanwha lose those three next games and be really struggling to pick up any win they can, whereas Dalmon do have a couple of easy matchups after Griffin. So we'll see if they can pick this one up. Definitely a huge matchup to decide who is going to make it into the playoffs. It won't be decided today. But obviously, a lot of points will swing one way or the other. And Hanwha Life, you already talked about it without mentioning the elephant in the room. You talked about how they always seem to lose the top teams. Remember, they are the line. In the last year, year and a half, if you're better than Hanwha, you're in playoffs. If you're worse than Hanwha, you're close to relegations. And Hanwha have been sixth for longer than they want to be. Looking over some stats here. Barons per game, pretty similar. Very up there. Dragons per game a bit of a, dif a difference between the two. Honestly, you look at these stats and say the numbers aren't the same, but it seems like their predicaments are pretty similar coming in, especially knowing Hanwha's future schedules. Thank you to production for sending that up there. I think the top lane battle is so interesting because Tal has been in great form and who he's facing is such a different assignment. It must suck preparing for Dumb One Gaming because while Flame and Nogari play similar champions, they're just innately different at this point in their careers. Nogari, this brash flame from 2013 player and flame evolving to be more of a team player over the years. So such different assignments. I'm so interested to see what the decision is. See some of the good moments from the match up here when uh, Dalmon was able to actually win some of these fights, but did eventually go on to lose 0 2 to King Zone, which is always important. But you'll notice that even from behind, they will fight back and look for opportunities, as they did here. Nuclear on point with his ass today. Oh, I, that day. I might have actually lost the Baron, actually, that play. But it looks good because he killed someone on screen. Yeah. And speaking of killing on screen, Sang Yoon got his Callista, Callista, and Ash, two big favorites for Sang Yoon, that I'm sure he'll be looking to visit today. This is going to be a really fun series. I think it should be super competitive. We said that the first time around, and then Humble Life. Uh, just run able to contend with Dalmon Gaming and Punch in particular. Do they bring Punch back today? And if his Lee Sin comes through, hard to give too much sympathy to Hanwha Life. This man's Lee Sin is super clean, but Bono also wants Lee Sin. Lee Sin first pick incoming Valdez. It's, it's a big one. If it doesn't get banned out, I would definitely see it coming out really, really soon as Hanwha played this fantastically really far behind in the fight, but able to get those tanks out in front and the Callista in position to do damage. That means it's no surprise to see Sangyun up against Nuclear here in the key player comparison. You can see that kill, what is that one on the bottom? Participation. Kill participation, okay, that makes sense. 75%, pretty high for an 80 carry, second in the league. Everything goes through. Sang Yoon has kind of been the story ever since Mickey left the Rox Tigers lineup a couple of years ago. They became, of course, as we know, Hanwha Life Esports, and, Mickey, and Sang Yoon is the, the big brand here. He's their guaranteed carry in the late game. Even Mickey's last season, he started playing Orianna so that Sang Yoon could actually shine next to him. So given that, I definitely understand this. Nuclear ends up being a bit pop player more often than not, and I look to the right. There's actually a selection surprise <laughs> on that side. For now, though, we talked about how important Damwon Gaming's decisions are. That's Nogari, that's Punch, so Punch Lee Sin. That's definitely something to talk about. And no barrel either. That will be Hoyt coming out and starting for game number one. And we'll have to wait and see because Damwon is very fluid with their swaps and their substitutions that do come out game by game. Just depending on how the players play and if they deserve to play another game, the coach here, world champion, obviously is very ready to switch it up if he doesn't like what he sees. And it also makes sense with some respect towards Tal if he's playing, but it isn't Tal today. It's notable that So One will be jumping into the top lane of Hanwha Life Esports. He, of course, might have said some hellos to his old organization after Series 1. 
was formerly captain of Jin Air. Now he finds himself on Hanwha Life. Bono and Lava will be joining him as well. So there's going to be definitely some surprises on both ends. We talked about how hard it is to pair with Damwon and their different top laners. Now you're surprised by a similar choice being made on the side of Hanwha Life. So with so much in flux, so much thrown up in the air, a lot of notes ripped into small pieces, who could actually pick up those pieces and find the lead in game number one? It's such an important matchup, and it's great that we already see the mind games coming in. That's really the biggest thing for me. So on, I think you mentioned it before, only has that one game on Urgot. So coming into a very different meta, and an interesting matchup up against a very lame dominant opponent in Nuggery that will be starting tonight. Can he step up to the plate and handle the responsibility that Tal has been doing very well with so far for Hama Life? See, my first thought is that you'd want So One against Flame because Tal has been better in the laning phase, more mechanically talented, I would say. The days of So One being a Riven one trick are many, many years now. He has only played, I believe, once or twice in competitive play. He hasn't played it recently in solo queue. So you look at this assignment and you say, how's Nagari's Riven feeling? How's his carries feeling? Akali boss could be a Nagari champion. This is a tough assignment to be brought back into lineup against. As a lot of the blocker champions, like the Urgot that he played the first time, they're at low power levels. And the carries, it seems like you can't ban out enough even with five bands sometimes sent against Nogari. Yeah, the teams, they have to post their rosters without knowing exactly who they're going up against. So maybe they were predicting Flame to come out and that was going to be their trap card for game one. You know, get the top lane ahead, so on on something aggressive and try to take out Flame. But that is not the case. As that's a dumb one. Head coach, little sign there. Showing the respect to the guy in the suit as we're going to be hopping onto the game here. Or at least to pick and ban for game one. And you and I are ready to show some respect to some new interpretations of patch 9.5. Remember, these teams have not played yet on this week's patch. You're joining us for the first time for match number 70. That means we only have 20 after this one, Valdez. Wow. 90 in the regular season. And you would like to know that Silas and Kale are globally banned in Korea. We're unaware of what LEC will be playing on later today. That will patch 9.5, but ban champions could change. And the hotfix for Nico is live. However, Cuvay popped off on that Nico. Don't think he was the reason they won, but the pick certainly had a lot of validity there. Coming into bans, notice Bono and Punch, hugely sin players. Bono's a two-punch champion. It's kind of awkward when we have someone named Punch, but the point I'm trying to get to is he plays Olaf Lee Sin at the highest level and everything else is a tier below. The Olaf is banned. Dumb one look like they're positioning themselves to first pick Lee and how will I have to decide, do we ban Lee or do we adjust our bans and get two power picks on the red side? Dumb one could also try to ban it out and say, hey, Punch, you play something else and let's get some other kind of first True. pick here as 10 seconds left, they're going to go with the Kalista. Yeah. You see Songyun's Kalista and you say no. And uh, they're going to say no with the ban. He's always had an incredibly high win rate on Kalista in solo queue, but also it is a staple of his recent champions and competitive history. So I like the Kalista blue side ban if you don't want to first pick it. Nuclear, where he's going to go on the AD carry pool is interesting. I want to see something new from him because he's not a great Ezreal when we have some real super Ezreals in our lineup and Ezreal priority is going down. And with full information, Dumb one say, maybe we'll go Rek'Sai into your Lee Sin if you take it, or take a Jace. So one has played a lot of Jace in his time. They won't be getting Jace, but they'll be getting the Lee Sin if they want it. Does open up the question if you'll just grab it, especially with the Olaf band. You would have to think it's a very high possibility here from the side of Hanwha Life. But they're gonna look down at Aurelia already. You would assume into top lane, it can be flex, but I imagine this will be against the Jace if that ends up being the top laner. So that's going to be So One's choice. He's played it before. Bold to take a skill matchup into Nogari, especially one that favors the Jace. Almost 100% to beat. Nogari's champion, he loves Jace and Rise. Those are his two picks. In fact, to Damon Gaming, just take Rise and work it all out later, because then both of them are Jace and Rise players. Saw the win percentage of Aurelia, currently 28%. I imagine a lot of those wins are Tovi. Lucian still is available, as it will be picked up here. Was played in our first series in top, but I can't see it from So One into 
Nogger is Jace, that would be bold and then some. Rise is a really big pick for some teams, but not every team. And again, we already mentioned it, for a series for these two teams. On patch 9.5, notice Lissandra available at this point, but not a big pick for Showmaker. I love that some of these picks are big for some players, not for others. And the Lissandra, with the nameplates on, has actually made it all the way through the first round as we get the Gen G 2018 special, the Ash Tom Kench, that I'm sure Sang Yoon would love to have on his side, given that Key has played 12 games of the Tom Kench, and Ash is a staple of Sang Yoon. It's very true. Looks like they're going to default to a guy that has risen in the ranks in the support role. Braum, very high tier nowadays, especially alongside the Lucian. Proc that pass up a little bit easier and pretty nice lane down into the bottom side can have some pressure. We'll see if Zangin will be playing that Lucian as well. Always got to keep that in the back of your mind. I'm going to be honest, Valdez. I look at this draft, given the names involved, given their games, and I feel like if we had the blind draft and then you had to raffle off who got which draft, I think Humble Life wishes they got dumb ones. Right? That's what I my read is here because yeah. so once Jace has been his best carry pick in his career and Sung Yoon's Ash. Ash Tom Kench, I think, is pretty safe here. You're, you're kind of relegated into Braum as your support because you didn't have access to the Tom Kench. So given all of that, I think Humble Life feel a bit hard done by, but of course the draw stars validity and can be piloted well. Always ironic to see Lava banning LeBlanc, given that he is a great LeBlanc player himself, but see what they want to last pick here for Humble Life. Bono has last pick jungle a lot, but now that the top two are gone from, we haven't seen him recreate the same power. So I'd actually like to see him just take a Rek Sai or take whatever the best available is and kind of grin and bear it and a counter pick for Lava, given that we're trying to understand wrap our heads around why Lava's back in the lineup to begin with. Seems like Dom1 reading into that Aurelia top pretty well as well. Think about the Aurelia, she's only one in the mid lane. Three games from Toby, one game from Showmaker. Those two players are undefeated on that champ, but ah, nobody else has found another way to get in as uh, looks like it'll be Zach coming in here for Bono. Interesting pick. Especially when Jace was given over and you're like, hmm, there's definitely gonna be some sides of the map that could be tricky. But I like what they did because you notice they further extend the Aurelia flex and they don't necessarily put all their eggs in the Bono basket, which recently hasn't been working. So I like Humble Life doing what feels counterintuitive based on the past. And okay. we get Akali here. We mentioned the potential for Rise Jace. Akali Jace is also quite spicy when it comes to lane assignments. My first thought, Noggery, top lane Jace, mid lane Akali. We did see Faker on the mid lane Akali this week. From all of that, they need a jungler. They have pretty much whatever they want, and we already saw Zinjao versus Zac not work out, so why not match impacts a little bit? Go for the Gragas, who has more teeth in the pre-6 phase, but isn't necessarily bound towards the super early game. Ends up being that Gragas for punch. So actually, kind of amazingly, no one took Lisa. I know, it's weird. <laughs> I don't think we're going to have a flex on any of these champions to allow Lee Sin to come in as Rise is going to be the final pick onto the side of Hanwha Life. We're expecting that to be into the mid lane that should be up against the colony. Let's wait for 20 seconds, but yes, this is how you would assume this would stack up based on their players, but things could change it is something to remember. Timer rolls down. Swapped but once. Will they do it again? They're having their fun. The mind uh. games continue. <laughs> I think I look at this and uh. I probably prefer Rise mid lane, but uh. I can understand both of the assignments way into the final seconds here. We're zoomed in on Sung Yoon for some reason. He's not involved here and it will be Rise mid lane. Problem for Aurelia is that Akali, especially after the buff, just comes out of the Shroud once and then just waits out the ultimate and takes no further damage. So the Shroud has kind of bonkers value especially in the mid lane with how short a lane it is. So I like Ryze in the mid lane instead. My query is though, top lane could be painful without ganks and asking Zach for ganks before he's good and ready, it doesn't work out. So we'll see how things go there because Jace Gragas should have a pretty big skirmish and priority advantage early game over the resulting top lane of Hanwha Life. Certainly have to believe that, and well, so on. A lot of responsibility on his shoulders to come into a game where he's replacing a guy like Tall. 
and to actually perform in a lane that's super hard up against a lane bully on a lane bully champion. So all eyes on Zohan. Can he actually make it work on the Aurelia that hasn't found too much success for, so far in LCK? Really interesting matchup between two pretty even teams. Desperation on both sides for sure. There's no guarantee both these teams make it to playoffs. And your first thought is win today and you're one step closer. It's a big match. Let's jump into game one now. Pretty huge cheers from both sides as they love pauses. And they're cheering for that, but no, it's a lot on the line for both these teams. So, of course, pouring their hearts into it as it looks like it's a home of life issue. Maybe Bono's monitor disconnected for some reason. That's not a good thing. At least now we can see that, in fact, his monitor is active. So hopefully that's just a once out. g Sun, you got something for us here? Big Hanwha Life fan wanting them to go to playoffs. And it's also it's also just shouting out the YouTube channel there. Honestly, Hanwha Life have been one of our best squads when it comes to producing content. They put out a lot of great content. Hanwha one of our last big Korean companies come into esports, and they're not trying to waste any time. They've definitely made a lot of fun stuff. Well, the bar didn't come out in game number one, yeah. sadly. <laughs> That's a great drawing. It really is. Really lovingly drawn, the Snow Day Bard. By far the best Bard skin you look. And we're also getting a headset change. Just a couple of little things before we can get into game number one. No chair issue, though. That's always important. Or toilet issue. Yeah. Haven't had one of those in 2019. Games don't go quite as long as they used to nowadays. Back in my day, we'd be sitting here for ages. How did the global fans get all the lollipops? We didn't find any Valdez. I know. Uh, where's our lolly? What's your favorite lollipop flavor? Um, cherry? Me too. I was going to say <laughs> cherry. Cost of synergy. I was just waiting and reading your Speaking minds. Speaking of synergy, there's too much Teemo here. Flame, are you going to play Teemo in your next game? When will your next game be? Also a pressing question for good old Flame. Could be game number two tonight. Let's get a penalty kill here, Sang Yoon. Let's see. She also ran here after work, or after school, rather. Well, we are 8 p.m. Korean Standard Time. Oh, he's found three handsome guys in League of Legends. Flame, Dong Jun, and Cloud Temple. Two casters <laughs> and one player, apparently. Yeah. But there's the countdown. It's reached zero. How about video games? How about them? I thought that would be, oh, we already had the cheers, yeah, we, right? we had the cheers. I was ready for some cheers. No cheers, just some cheers from Gargus. He's always happy to have a drink. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy who needs cheers. He makes his own cheers. Punt watching that series before, of course, with Cuz playing the Gragas. Can he get some inspiration from there and actually make it work? Of course, Cuz also played the Gragas into Dom1 Gaming when they did take that win. So Punt's trying to take a page out of his book. Again, we want to talk about the stakes if you're joining us late. Hanwha Life are eight and five fifth. Damon Gaming have eight wins, but they've played an extra series and lost it. So there's a potential for there to be two series between the two teams if Hanwha Life can win. So Damon pretty desperate for that win, understandably. However, Hanwha Life's remaining schedule is the worst. They have to play against SKT, Griffin, and Sandbox. So three of the top three, all three of them are remain there. So Fair question. You may have more games to play, but damn, are they some hard ones. And, uh, you know, Punt and Ugri, they are the duo that always come out together. They're going to start off with saying, well, you wanted to help your Aurelia in the top side. No, thank you. We're going to make you go to your blue side and maybe even attempt a three buff here. I say want to take as much pressure off of Nuggery so that he can continue to do his thing and put on pressure in the top lane. Hasn't this been a while? It's been a hot second since they've vertical jungled around Nuggery on a good matchup. But that's what we see here. Nuggery's in the lineup. Vertical jungling is happening. Jace gets to the minion seconds. Obviously gets not the same level one zoning like we've seen in Jace versus Cho'Gath matchups. Who will never forget that? So they get the vertical jungling. Zach is probably going to get his camps though. And that's the cost here is yes. Zach can't impact the top lane and Aurelia gets dunked on, but if they don't pull off a turret dive, 
Zach's getting half the map. Sometimes we see Zach getting a third of the map or a quarter of the map or almost one or two camps. So there is a cost to this. It does mean that Zach will hit level six more often than not at the same timing as the Grugs. Yeah, and honestly, so on here at level one is doing a pretty good job of denying a, a bunch of the damage. Dodge the accelerated shock blast already. And got a couple of minions uh, pretty fortunately there with his stun. Yeah, you have to start E in this matchup. Uh, unless you have full access to the wave and guarantee level two, because if you're marooned away from the minions without E, you ain't getting any of them. I'm alive. Remember, it's a split map. They uh, could try a map player. Lava's <laughs> walking down so early. Tom Kench has the devour. Not sure how I feel about this one, as the TP is coming in. Immediate devour, as Aftershock will be good to help Bono get out of there. They do get the TP as well. TP from the mid laner, so it is a resource that's been gained, but... Like you're saying, it was Tom Kench, and there was a heal between the two champions. That, of course, is the choice. Guardian heal. If there was no heal, no Guardian, I could understand it. Now, top lane, there's only three <laughs> minions here, and the turret shot's already tanked. It's all about the dives today. Double stun, though, as Soan is doing a dance, but the first blood will still go the way of Dom1. Lava going to use his TP this time to pick up one kill. Already has his tier. Is going to be looking for Punch as well. Punch it, wait, 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 and now the body, very nicely done by nice. Punch. He had the extra advantage there. Lava just hoped he was gonna juke more towards his team. Instead, juking towards the blast plan was the way to go. So it was only a one for one. So not a much to do about nothing overall, but look at the first buy. The fact that the kill went to Jace is very significant because he's got the first of the Dirks, we're gonna call. We're gonna call this one Nowitzki. Okay. We'll just leave that one out there. And uh, we watched the turret dive here. The double stun threatened to just completely turn this one around. Really did, but very well juggled there by Nuggery and Punch. The chemistry, the synergy, working out well for them. And a nice dive that does net them that first blood. So we'll see if they can continue with that pressure up there as someone's going to be under turret for a lot of this game. We had a lot of fans on Twitter messaging us about overlooking Nowitzki. We first mentioned Dirk from EU, one of the head producers out there. And then we mentioned the other Dirks we knew and we just left him, unfortunately, to the side. I'm Australian, so I don't know American basketball as much. So I, <laughs> Neither do I, I defaulted to English Premier League slash... Uh, Dutch Odevisa in Dirk Kite and Dirk Nanus, the Australian cricket player. Australian or South African, I actually forget. But cricket player is all I said, so I nailed that one to begin. And we forgot Dirk Nowitzki, that of course to a lot of our fan base is going to be the more famous Dirk. How do you like your Dirks? Serrated or not? Uh, no, just pointy. That's, pointy that's my favorite type of Dirk. Fair yeah. enough. Well, Soan is of course enjoying all the fun of Jace versus Aurelia in the early lane. But the vertical jungling to some degree is over. Zack was around, but spotted out by Nuggery. Oh boy, okay, gonna spot the two junglers in here. Who's gonna be the first mid laner to get on top of it? Looks like it's Showmaker. As Lava will trade a little bit back, but level six for Showmaker means that Hama do not want to take a fight. What is the result across map? Because we saw a lot of action, right? Mirrored, and we saw a kill trade that we like the Jace picking up. Dirk has got a turret plate already, and Enhancing the pain onto the Aurelia, whose first buy is probably going to be Tiamat, just to wave there rather than actually the chance to fight back. Across the map, the only other interesting difference is that Showmaker, with two TPs being used, actually in a really nice position against the Rise. About a minion wave and a half to two minion waves advantage, depending on when the minions crash, is not something to be overlooked too hastily. And this is a Kali with a lot of her power returned, may not have the heal anymore. But some of the changes to side laning with the much more reliable ability to arm the full duration W and the movement speed on the passive, there's a lot to like about Akali again. And while it might not be a first pick Akali meta, she's definitely a champion that's around the meta. You'll definitely see her every once in a while here in LCK, especially with a bunch of the guys that love to pick up this champion. Tovi is obvious, but Faker showed it, as well as Showmaker coming in and making a show for us. Will he put on the carry pants tonight? Something we always hope for in the form of a Katarina, but 
wouldn't be so mad if it was the Akali this time. Well, we know who wears the pants in the top lane. It's the guy who has serrated Dirk and Caulfield's Warhammer. No regen, because it's Nuggery. He's got the slam and matchup, and we already mentioned jungling around the Jace vs. Aurelia matchup. Punch says, oh, it's oh, mine. Oh, he missed One it. HP. One HP. That was actually oh. unbelievably <laughs> unlucky. <laughs> it was one HP. How does that even happen? So rigged. Red buff is playing for the red team. <laughs> and now Bono's looking for a gank. He's got red buff. And the knockoff. Here we go. Okay, ultimate comes in and then a stun and there's no hope. And that red buff helps out in making that gank work. Dumb One Gaming left home and the weather report read blue skies. The thunderstorm literally came out of nowhere from the heavens of first a 1 HP red buff steal into a top lane gank to send behind the Jace who had all the items. This is a tilter and Dumb One Gaming have been known for some emotional play from what we can gather because there's definitely been games that from a very clear kind of flare point, the game has just gone away from them quick. Watch this play. <laughs> w auto one HP, not three, not four. Even score was uh, less he close just runs than this. Top. The, the war just expires. <laughs> and he's like in perfect range of level three <laughs> elastic slingshot. Okay. We got him, we got him. Nice, nice, nice. I like this is the comms on the other side during the VOD review. The VOD review of that one, of the things that had to happen in a row for that to happen, will definitely be uh, more colorful, let's say. <laughs> I mean, say the Gragas gets red buff. Bono doesn't hit level 5. By the way, he got level 5 on the red buff. Uh, the Gragas is much higher on health. He's able to stick around the top side, you know? Most importantly, that E is not in range for the Zac, and the gank will probably not happen. So, that's it a lot is of, actually a big deal. That's a lot of things in a row. And all Nogari can say is, matchup's still good. Turret plates, you know, still on the menu. But he's slowing down. That's what happens, right? He went and bought a Ruby Crystal on his back, so it's not like he's going to be hurting anymore. And flashes are back up. I'm on gaming. Now they're trying to make a map play elsewhere, because surprisingly, top lane wasn't the fertile ground it should have been. Punch. We see Nagari back away because his jungle is bot side. Doesn't always do plays like that. Nagari can sometimes be too lane focused. That should mean that Damon Gaming pick up a pretty comfortable mountain drift. No vision down here. Double control ward towards the mid lane. And Bono just drops down a vision ward trying to scope out what he can see. Seemed like they already knew it was happening. But again, not much they could do to contest that one. So a mountain drink, definitely a good one when you got Ash, Jace, and even a Colleen. In the front round, I was loving Damon Gaming's drive, even as it's all rounded out. I actually really love it, Valdez, because what do you build to side lane here? Because if Damon Gaming are choosing the lane assignments, you can't build to be tanky against Jace and Akali. It's impossible. They just do too much damage. So it's very tricky to choose your main line. Do you just build health and try to straggle the line and can't really deal with either? Feels like lane assignments here. Remember Ash, Tom, Kent, pretty good at also rotating around a good lane assignment. If things get going, Dumb One Gaming just open up huge leads if they're on point with their macro. And it's on Bono and so on to interrupt that because otherwise, we talked about the small areas where the, the drafts weren't overlapping. It did feel like Dumb One Gaming should have the early control and thus have the bigger decision making to do around the mid game. But Bono finding more and more ganks getting Aurelia ahead would throw a huge wrench in the plan. Looking for Nuggery here, ults are available, and he's gonna get knocked up into the stun. Waits on that Aureli ultimate for quite a bit. Nice knockback and a flash, plus Yomu's. Gets him out of dodge here, well played by Nuggery 1v2. Nuggery is really, really strong on mechanical mid on top laners like the Jace, so the moment that he wasn't able to flash early, he had everything else in point to not die. Very well played there, but the summoner's down, and it is four points, soon to be five points at Elastic Slingshot. He's seeping straight back in because he knows that now, with the ults down, they do win 2v2. And it's smart of Hanwha Life not to try to collapse on First support up to the Rift Herald is going to be key, but this is a Tom Kent who could get in position. They're not going to start the Rift Herald, just playing around with it for now. 
Bot lane has been CS for CS with Ash. Ash has actually been in that interesting spot, Valdez, where Ash versus Kalista has been going better than we expected for Ash. Ash versus Lucian. Now going CS for CS. Yeah. The old area where that was relevant was in the last Caitlyn meta. I'm thinking 2017 Worlds. Um, 2016 Worlds as well. People realize, wait, just go Ash into it. You have similar attack range, 50 less, but the arrow could punish Caitlyn, trying to just push, push, push. And so against some of these other lane dominant champions, Ash working out, may not be Song Yoon's, but Nuclear, him smashing aiming with a couple of arrows were a big reason that Damwon Gaming picked up a match victory that time out. Abano's pretty low on health, no flash here from Punch. Not gonna force the engage, but Hamar definitely looking to get on in there. Smite does go the way of Punch though, and TPs are coming in. So I'm gonna get low and have to fly away. Nice cast to keep him in range and assassinated by the Akali. Gets that kill and is looking for another one, and Hanma Life are just gonna be totally routed, trying to force the fight at the Rift Herald. It's not gonna work out this time. Hoy, uh, what are you doing? He's dying. <laughs> oh, he, the Guardians! He lives. he lives. He actually lived with the Guardians, Joe. That was so big there. Big mistake by Hanwha Life. They all roll up, but it can only be a 5v4. The only person who can't join is Sang Yoon. He has heal, so he has to play towards his lane. Nuclear teleports in. It's a 5v4, and Hanwha Life are routed. And the timing of it, too. Three plates in the mid lane. One more up to the chase in the top lane. So much gold swing goes the way of Dom one after a play like that. And unfortunately, this was a very controllable scenario for Hanwha Life. They didn't have to full on commit. The start of it is fine, because you do not want a free Rift Herald going to the enemy. They start to posture and you're like, wow, yeah, okay, Zach, Aurelia, I can see it, I can see it rising from these strong champions, but the difference in the minimap, Ash can join, Lucian can't, and then very quickly, and while I understand that they've made a grave mistake, I thought Hoyt was done for. He didn't have his nuclear heal available. Nuclear get in? <laughs> yeah. He, he, nuclear nuclear's like, get nope. in. There's no heal on nuclear. Hoyt hasn't got yeah, heal available. Got the, well, got the barrier, I and we censored it, Valdez. It was so close that it was actually not stream acceptable. Now we're getting Coach Box uh, sound as well. A couple of claps and uh, a small nice and a high five. I'm just happy we censored that Guardian play. It was not strict. Yeah, yeah. We're going to cut out of the replay as well. So, guys, good thing you caught it live. You were there. Someone is uh, pushing up. Now, the timer here is important. It's the first time Jace has kind of left him alone in lane. It is after 14 minutes. Turret plates, they're not all in Aurelia's lane, but two of them are there. And overall, five turret plates. Four of them, you would assume, Showmaker picking up most of the gold around. And uh, 450 gold, a bounty comes from the two kills, 50 more from gold as bot lane. Okay, we're looking for the stun here. Can the gray health come in? Yes, it can. And it looks like after that tower dive, he's not gonna have flash and it's super easy for Halmon to pick up a follow-up kill. He was super dead, he's like you say, endangered species at the moment. We had a scare in mid lane, but that's the confirmation that sadly, the uh, uh -oh. benching has happened as ult flash and by the room can get some away, but a lot of tools used to escape Bono's turret dive. Good arrow there. Showmaker able to get that one. The last shot from the cannon picks it up. After he does a bunch of damage. Speaking of damage, Jace and Nuggery, two things that go very well together. And how about some kills as trying to get this wow. one? The Dunkerino with the smite as well just puts Aurelia out of her misery. That bounce was literally into Gragas' lap. It yeah. couldn't have been any better. The only way I've seen better plays is when Scar says, watch this, puts down a regular Q, then bounces with the ult yeah. into his fermented keg. But that one was right up there. So nicely done by Punch. He knows the angles on the Lee Sin. Apparently, Gragas also in his wheelhouse. Good at geometry and knocking people around. It's two important things if you're a jungler. And remember and how that well, first turret died. How about fast. another turret? Yeah. <laughs> the second one dies instantly, and the Aurelia matchup that works at, say, 6,000, 7,000 gold, you know, when you're 14, 1,700 gold, whatever it is at this point, it gets pretty tricky. We're going to go back to the earlier play where they just decided that Hoyt was done. It's Tom Kench out of water. No hope for him, no flash. I no think anything. the replay of the top lane angles from the Gragas. 
Let's see if it's fully intentional. You can oh. usually tell based on the angles. This is just, of course, Nogari being one of the best at playing pressure lanes. But watch Punch. He rolls in and says, how about everything goes perfectly? Look at this. <laughs> Could it be any better? Come to Papa. <laughs> Right in his lap, literally. Wait, was that me? Was that yeah, a that was, that was you yeah, on the Gragas. Good thing about being named Papa Smithy, a lot of lines just roll off the tongue and sound <laughs> yeah. funny as hell. As, uh, yeah. in the side lane. Remember, he also, without being on screen doing things, is way ahead. 2-0 and 550 now on that bounty. How my life. Still looking for an opportunity here. And it looks like he's going to find an Aurelia again as nice stun, but it's 1v3, my son. So See this, you later. You remember when we talked about what it looked like if Homo Life got blasted going for the Zac drop? This is that game state right now where, at the moment, Jace kills everyone, Akali kills everyone, the Gragas has first movement, as does Tom Kench Ash, and you have utility advantage. So suddenly, Bono needs to be getting the uh, big kidnaps, and you need to be getting some kills, because right now the map is being exclusively run with more tools by Damwon, and how will I have to next level them? Otherwise, it could all be for naught. There could be a 10,000 gold lead post-haste. And Damwon are playing very confidently as well. They're just roaming around the map as a unit. They, they get Showmaker. Nobody's really able to go up against Showmaker. Rise wasn't there. They rotate over, get another turret. They already have five turrets here. And the game's only 18 and a half minutes in. Point to the person who goes against the Jace. Point to the person who goes against the Akali. I'm not hearing an answer on either. Right now, they have the opposite of flexible lane assignments. Lava might not die in both those matchups, but certainly can't just take long extended trades there. Yeah. The Banshee Veil's being built. What does that say? Ooh, one Akali, please. I'll try to contend with her. Doesn't mean you'll be able to answer completely, but that's the attempt. And you don't always get that lane assignment with all the teleports. Three on down one and Abyssal Voyage. And Punch is a pretty fast fat man. He's super jolly going around with his Predator. He's building up that AP2. Not quite the death cap just yet, but he's looking down at his Zonia's real soon here. No Sork Boots, but... Uh... Or I guess they're sort of Amateur hour sort over here. shoes, as I found out recently. <laughs> you can call them sock boots. It's fine. Uh, okay. I got the permission from Popeye. You I can say better now. tower instead of turret as well. Bush instead of brush. How about nine. creep instead of minion? I mean, we call it CS, right? That's creep score. And we call them minions. That's so. only because we can't call it MS, because that's movement speed. Yeah, and it's, you know, a holdover from the Dota days, so you understand why that happens, but we're pretty flexible here. I know that in some other MOBAs, they can be very particular about this. I was told by uh, Heroes of the Storm Passes. We'll hold Heroes of the Storm Analysis. We're going fishing again as, oh boy, that's a big catch. Gets the Tom Kench and the ass, but is it enough damage? Here's Aurelia, gets one, gets two, and Nogari's going to flash over the wall here trying to get away. He's pretty flexible, actually. Nice gymnastics here from Nuggery. Might actually make his way out of this one. But what do we say? Bono find and engage against five and make it about you. And that's what they did. They pick up the kills. Recreate it might be hard, but here's some welcome gold for the side of Hamalai. Zach comes in too and puts down the dunk and makes that three into the pockets of Hamalai. This is what Zack can do. No other champion has the threat range that he does with Elastic Slingshot. This game state is what they want. Side lanes, Jace time to walk up, but it's all done by Bono and he gets the two for one that Zack versus Tom Kench can often provide. Those Zack mechanics, you don't always have to talk about them, but he catches the catfish, flashes onto Ash, knocks the heads together and kidnaps them both. That it is some happen. genuine glee on that Hamwa Life fan who had the Song Yoon sign. She is hyped, and she should be. She, for no doubt, saw what we did. The game slipping away from Hanwha Life, but they pick up and against the run of play, Zach engage. And until you can basically ward every possible 1,000 plus engage range Zach play, or unless you can kill the Zach, you can recreate that one. We feel like it's easier for Dumb One. They should still have the tools to take out this game. They still have a sizable goal lead, and yet a couple more from Bono, and maybe Hanwha Life can get over the edge after all. Zach is certainly getting online right now with that ability as, are we just gonna start a Baron? They're definitely thinking about baiting it at least as 
It will not be started. Remember, what's Hamalai's predicament? Ooh, the side lane assignments. We can't deal with that. Ooh, they can out-rotate us. Can't deal with that. If we bring them all to us, those things mean less. If we can make it about does Zach get the big head bump into the kidnap, way to do that is to make it honest and keep it all. They will win in the five man while the enemy wants to win in the one three one. So because of that, walking around Baron and milling around Baron, we criticize some teams for doing that. We will not criticize Hanwala. Yeah, I like the play from them so so far, even from behind. Even So on who is Surely down on his luck in this lane has been able to keep it at four deaths. Keep in mind, Jace has three, too, so not doing so bad after that start. Was able to pick up one of the kills from that last play as well, get some items, and is now an actual threat in this game. Let's see how Dom One plays around what they have, though. They are no doubt a team experience with 1 3 1. Noguri excels in a side lane. So. You know what the enemy wants to do, and the fact that in every other case, you should run the play. How do you close out the game? Intriguing to see how Dom One do it. Nogari's rolling down. He is roaming more than you might expect, but Aurelia has no teleport. So right now, they roll up with TP advantage and should easily be able to start the Baron control. But do they start the Baron? That's a more bold move. You see they get that Baron vision control. There is one nice ward, actually. You can spot it to the left of the Baron by Humble Life that has gone unscanned and unseen. It's not going to have direct vision on the Baron, but could be good for teleports if they eventually do get them. One small mechanic I want to impress on the fans here is that when Zack is going for red side Baron defense, remember that you can't make the same Baron plays we saw, for example, Kingzone doing in our previous series, and they're pretty common, right? Where you start the Baron, get to 2,000, and then at the right moment, the person with the interrupt goes over the wall or throws the interrupt spell, and you take the Baron. That doesn't work against Zack, because Zack can go immune with the ultimate and ult into the pit to smite it away. So you do have the ability to get through it. Alistair Headbutt, an Ash ult, something like that. And that's a very important thing to discuss. Maybe you actually try to next level the next level and do something like... Uh, the Akali ultimate because it goes so fast and it has a 0.5 second interrupt, but that's 0.5 seconds that could be the difference and they got trolled by a 1 HP smite. <laughs> so stopping a Zac from getting out of the pit, whether he's out of range and jumping in from a long range or he's using his ult to immune a spell, it is so much harder to go for a smart Baron play against Zac. That it is in Hanma Life as a team. <laughs> Even though they are down in gold, almost 3,000 here. They are stepping forward as five, trying to clear out as much vision as possible. They're not going to go down without a fight. As you guys can see, they're doing a good job of responding to Nuggery's split push. They've been able to get their two TPs close to off cooldown now, which is also very important up against this much split pushing. And it's going to be a fun game to VOD review for anyone involved from here on outwards, because it should be so clear on who the aggressor is and who's responding at all moments. Don Juan pushes out three lanes at the same time as Grog as Tom Kench Ash. Grog Hawk shots and put down deep vision and it's a tussle, a tug of war that can only be interrupted by a hard engage or a minion wave crashing that can be answered, say, at the inhibitor line. So right now, with a TP advantage, Don Juan Gaming haven't found a way to stop Baron, which is a small disadvantage to Don Juan Gaming, but not a game-breaking one. They still rule the side lanes but they don't roll the team fights, so the timings have to be crisp. So I think you practice in scrims, in theory from the coaching staff and how to tell and level up their teammates. And macro game hasn't always been a reliable one for Dom One. So we focus on both points for now. Control wards all over the Baron, and Bono's health bar accounted for, but not actually DPS down. Top lane pushing into Hanwa. Bottom seems pretty even, maybe pushing towards Dom One and they seem to come on in and group all together as the Infernal's about to spawn. Nobody wants to give up that huge objective with this much damage on the map. However, remember three Dom One control wards are on Baron, which means they only have two left over, which might be actually be zero, depending on who put down those control wards. And you can't control both sides, so they might give up something to get Infernal control. And then remember, wait, the enemy team has a 5v5 comp. Why are we 5v5ing around Infernal? So they should be able to problem solve away to actually cause pressure, but now Aurelia can TP down. So things 
setup wise seem to be more for Hanwha Life getting a 5v5 than Down One Gaming turning the map against them. Hanwha Life now setting up for this Infernal. They gotta get Soan in here somehow. He does have his TP. Showmaker though trying to zone away Bono. He's now behind them as okay. Down One just step on in. Hanwha gonna take the safe way out and say, we will let you have the Infernal if you beat us this time. Showmaker got them in Infernal alone. That was actually a super sick play. He used his E, yeah, I believe with the Assassin's Path, could have the name wrong, over the wall, shrouded, that kept Bono out. Seeing a rotational play here, I believe. Actually, no, a flank onto Soan. Oh boy, Soan taking way too much damage. There's the arrow to the face, but had to be devoured. Showmaker still going down. Showmaker zoning out so much of this. Zach gonna go down on the top side and make that two kills now to the side of Dom one. Really nicely played. Remember, this is with Flame in the lineup, and people say he's the one who levels up the shot calling. Showmaker alone, eat over the wall, shrouded. Bono couldn't go past him, and he solo zoned and got out, and they get the time Kench play out to get further kills. Dom one gaming a threat of taking everything. You notice what they do too, you mentioned taking everything. They don't even let the yep. mid push come in first. They're like, no, there's no reason. We can go no smite. stop that. You don't have smite, we can come to Baron, and not much you can do. They're gonna try to 3v5 here, our Hama Light. See how this does work out. Taking a little bit of damage, uh, but the smite is there. There was no smite on Punch either, amusingly. Yeah. Okay, well, he did the damage anyway. Hoyt is gonna be the sacrifice, and now here comes Hama Life, getting that slow. Onto the ash, Arise does a ton of damage, but now they're turning it around. Sohan gonna get that nice stopwatch down, and now he's looking to go in once again. This is so close, but Punch turns it around, and in goes Showmaker 2, as Damwon are gonna flex on top of Hanwha Life here. Down will go the last member, and Bono alone, Punch comes in at the last second and makes the fight his. It was a tale of two stasises, but the last one held the victor. Really cool last fight after the Baron, and Dom one get everything. This is after so Showmaker alone got them an Infernal from a smart move. They get the Abyssal Voyage in. This is the Ash Tom Kench deal we talked about. So one dies on the back end, as we know. But the further plays around Baron were pivotal as well. Dom one had the different utility options, but we weren't sure they could use them. They've squandered them before. They get two kills, including the Smite. Gragas doesn't have Smite here. This is not information to harm alive. They get the Baron, but watch the couple of plays. I want to call out two going golden moments. The first one is for a different reason after Tom Kench goes down. So one dives in, following up the flash. And you know Zonya poses always have to be rated. Look how cool this one is. 10 out of 10 yeah. with the blades extended. Very nice from So on. But punches is more impactful. Oh. We were waiting for a Lee Sin-esque play. They get one. It was the Body Sam Flash into Going Golden, and that's the moment where Dom One Gaming breaks the backs of Hanwha Life. It was alluded to earlier. Now the lead is huge. He's not necessarily stacking up his Majais or picking up all the kills. He's 1-0-10, but Punch with that move may even earn himself an MVP in this one, helping out in the top lane and doing a good job here. Almost 100% kill fight. participation, 1-0 yeah. and 10. It's a big reason why they're winning this game, even past that tilting smite that he lost at the enemy red buff. And Well, now we've got Baron here on the side of Damwon, and looks like Bono's going to still be looking for a angle to get on in here. Only question you need to ask, where is Bono? They don't know the answer, they know where he likely is. Get your poke down before you walk up as Dumb on Game. Showmaker comes into mid and spots the blob. That means that Dumb One can just poke back away and then regroup and go for the push now. As nobody's fooled by Bono coming in here. Oh, they get the rise in the backside. Just gonna open up this inhibitor. Make that one and now count them two. As two of the inhibitors will go down already. Well, at least Hoyt's happy that his friend Nuclear is joining him way more than he was earlier. <laughs> Damon Gaming, it's easy to play two lanes and then just move over. Yes, they can play 1-3-1, one, one, but 1-3-1 one, one means that Zach might find an engage on the three or one of the side laners. So they actually play it smart, like you say, pushing the mini wave in mid with Baron, and then Akali sees Zach. That part is easy to relieve the pressure. Take both those inhibitors. And now, even if you engage, the best you're gonna do is keep your third inhibitor from going down. So. You're stacking the deck, as has been stacked from the Jace first pick here from Dom One Gaming. You cannot leave that open for Noggery. He is one of our god laners in the top lane. 
Dama Gaming push up, and Hanwha Life, it's almost time for the emergency engage, and that one very rarely works. Baron is out, and it looks like this is the moment. Really nice interrupt there. On to the Elastic Slingshot. Showmaker going to the back line, too. Nearly assassinates Song Yoon almost immediately. As all the slows come in, the cast's going to knock So One into danger as well. And it looks like Dom One Gaming should be picking up game number one. Like you called out, the most impactful thing there was the body slam. Excellently done by Punch. Pretty good pose as well. They're going to close out the game. Well deserved victory for Dom One Gaming. And my only takeaway here is that our one trick Lee Sin's a three trick now. The Olaf's pretty good. The Gragas is right up there with the Lee Sin. Really nice from Punch. And Nogari Punch come in. No problem sided. Nice victory, Dom One Gaming. Certainly doesn't feel like a match where we're gonna have Flame and Canyon subbed in. I see a sub right here, not necessarily because someone played a poor game or anything like that, but maybe you just wanna try your luck at throwing in Tall. Playing someone after all this time kind of feels like a ruse that is now up after game number one. As Coach is gonna be talking with Nuggery and all the side of Dom One Gaming should be really happy with that win they picked up. And I pull up game score, and we talked about how Humble Life have a match in hand. We also talked about how three of their matchups against teams that they are not favored to beat. Issue is actually compounded by the fact, Valdez, that uh, Dumont Gaming actually have a good game score. They've had more 2 zeros in the past, so because of that, Dumont Gaming, if they win 2 0, they move to plus 7, 9, and 6, and Humble Life will be plus one, eight and five, which means even if they beat one of that hard opposition, they're gonna be plus three, so game score, the second tiebreaker. Remember guys, in Korea, match score, best of three victories, then how you did against the field, your wins over your losses in terms of best of one, so how clean you were, two zeros or two ones, is the second tiebreaker. Head to head's the third tiebreaker, so if Dom One Gaming do win two zero, they actually have a lot of advantage over Hanwha Life, so it looked on paper like Dumb One Gaming having played more matches with the ones with the fire up them to actually have to find a way to yeah. win. Suddenly, this if this is a 2-0, Humble Life aren't kissing anything goodbye, but it gets a whole lot harder. I mean, they got 2 0 to once by Dumb One yeah. Gaming. They don't want to get 2-0 no. again, but we're certainly looking at that possibility here after game number one was relatively one-sided. There was a couple of good moments from Bono on the Zack. You know, was able to get that good gank up on the top side to allow Aurelia to have a bit more of an easier lane. Also, that mid-game team fight was pretty good, but it was basically only that, and that wasn't enough to allow them to win the game. And if you remember my analysis after the first round, what did we say about Dumb One's draft? Oh, this is actually the draft Hanwha Life wishes they got, even though both teams traded power. I think that was true in effect as well. Bono wasn't dictating our tempo jungler. He was on Zack, and he got half a map, but unfortunately, Dom One got a Dirk early, and then even though Jace died a couple of times, and there was some unlucky things, just think about this. What if the smite still didn't come? It would have been an even cleaner victory for Dom One game. Yeah, have to give that up to them. Dom One looking really clean with multiple different lineups, and uh, as I mentioned before, unfortunately for Hanwha, they kind of looked like the team for me, especially with their hard schedule coming up that might be falling out of playoffs. Once again, would be pretty disappointing for them, but they will have another chance here in game two to try to come back and make this a series. So we'll see if they can do that after the break.